On today's episode, I'm going to showcase the food of Chef Peter Chang. He's one of the most acclaimed, if not the most acclaimed, Chinese chef in the United States. And he happens to be based here in the Washington, D.C. area. So let's try some of his food. Let's go! It's common to hear Peter Chang described as a chef with a cult following. And he started his rise as a chef uh, at the Chinese embassy in Washington, D.C. in the early 2000s. And upon leaving there, he bounced around from one restaurant to another in Northern Virginia and then at seemingly random stops in Georgia and Tennessee, he built a reputation as a kind of wandering chef uh, who cooked amazing Chinese food, uh, Szechuan food specifically, uh, and no one could locate him and pin him down. Uh, but then in uh, 2011, he did settle down opening a restaurant in Charlottesville, Virginia, and then subsequently a string of other restaurants in uh, Virginia and also in Maryland. Uh, the location uh, that I'm visiting today in Arlington, Virginia, opened in 2015 and was his first restaurant in the Washington, D.C. area. Having established a restaurant empire during these years on several occasions, he was nominated for a James Beard Award, which are the Oscars of food. And this only further solidified his position as a premier chef. I got a bunch of stuff to try, and uh, the gentleman who took my order really helped me out a lot. I basically put it in his hands. What should I get? What do you make well? What are your specialties? And uh, with that prompt, he basically suggested uh, what I should try. And they do have a large menu. It can be intimidating. Uh, a lot of the stuff sounds very similar in their descriptions. There are very uh, subtle nuances from one dish to another. <laughs> so he helped me a, a lot in that regard. Uh, but going in, I knew that I would be trying this first item, this appetizer. It's called dry fried eggplant. And uh, this is definitely a signature item for Chef Peter Chang. And uh, I've had it before, uh, but uh, it's been a long time. So I'm going to reacquaint myself with this. Looking down on it, it looks like French fries, kind of a large cut french fry of some sort but it's eggplant it's been battered very uh generously although not overly battered and it's fried it's crispy it has a slight orangey red color to it there's chili flakes and uh, some scallions let me just poke one and and get started <laughs> oh man Oh, let me, let me get some more. Oh, wow. Mmm. Wow, that is crispy. Wow, that is sinfully fried. Wow. Let me get some, wow, let me get a few more. Oh, my God. The exterior of those planks of, of eggplant have a very f uh, firm quality about them. 
and they're really they're really freakishly crispy and the you know the vegetable itself is kind of gushy as as you know as eggplant is and then you have not an overwhelming spiciness but you have you know like a, an inflected spiciness that kind of dances around your tongue and just kind of punctuates kind of like in a secondary way it punctuates the flavor of the exterior and the eggplant wow it, it's a very complimentary kind of spiciness mm. let me let me get some of this this some of these spring onions and chilies yeah oh, oh wow when you chase the eggplant with the spring onions and the chili you get a a jab of spiciness and kind of onioniness, but you also get a bit of saltiness too. Wow, that's really nice. Mmm, wow. When I asked for help in ordering, uh, the gentleman who helped me, the staff member, he didn't hesitate to say that I should get the cumin lamb. I think that was the first uh, option out of his mouth. And uh, of course, I ordered the cumin lamb because uh, he, he was emphatic that I should. <laughs> so I put some on my rice and uh, here it goes. Oh. Wow, that was a good first bite. Let me uh, let me get some more. Mmm. Oh man, the the lamb is really flavorful and really tender. You really taste the cumin and the chili combining into a very forceful uh, combination of flavor. Wow, it really comes through on that lamb. And it's generously, you know, augmented with uh, uh, red and green bell peppers. Uh, there's some shaved carrots in here as well as some cilantro. <laughs> wow. And it's really good with the rice. Wow. Mmm. Wow, that's good because how cumin lamb can really lose out is when it's not tender enough and uh, when you can't really taste the cumin because uh, if you're gonna call something cumin lamb, you better be able to taste the cumin flavor and that lamb has to be tender, it can't be tough. You know, I've had cumin lamb before, you know, at various places over the years. Sometimes it can be very hard and tough and the cumin flavor can be lacking and I can see why this is a recommended dish. Uh, why the staff feel so highly about it because the execution on this is really stellar. They really, really nail it. My next uh, entree comes from the section of the menu entitled Grandmother Home Style Cooking. And uh, this is the shredded duck with scallions and onions on a hot iron plate. That's, uh, that's how it's listed on the menu. Of, of course, if you get it takeout, you don't get the hot iron plate. I don't know if that makes a huge difference or not, but uh, as I'm looking at it, it looks really good. Uh, shredded duck, yeah, with a lot of onions and scallions as advertised. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Oh, I gotta eat some more to get a good feeling for this. Mmm. Wow. Wow, that's really good. It kind of caught me off guard because everything I've eaten so far has been spicy and it doesn't have a classically, you know, spicy and numbing Szechuan flavor that you would typically associate with Szechuanese food. It isn't spicy. It has almost like a soy flavor, soy sauce flavor. And those scallions and onions really come through. Wow. 
The duck is just shredded and very tender, and it's just really moist and flavorful, that duck. It almost has, you know, almost like a Cantonese flavor to it because it's not, it's not spicy, and the dish really is relying on the simplicity, you know, a relative simplicity of flavors. The duck and just kind of a gentle stir-fried soy sauce flavor, really, wow. But it's the shreddedness of the duck that kind of turns it into something else because when you shred it like that, it gets really soft. And it's not like eating roast duck where the meat is, you know, moist, but it can be firm because it's just kind of uh, chopped on the butcher block and uh, presented that way. But when you shred it, kind of like, you know, when you eat shredded uh, or pulled pork, the way they use the shredded or chopped up onions kind of reminds me of uh, the way onions are used in Chinese American cuisine, really. You know, when you eat pepper steak or some kind of dish like that where the onion is shredded and chopped finely into like little strands and you stir fry them quickly to kind of, you know, bring out the onioniness of it, but you still have the crispness and the firmness of the onions. I mean, these onions aren't uh, cooked to death where they become, you know, soft and mushy. They still retain some body. So they were just very gently and quickly stir fried, but softened during the cooking process. And it really brings out the flavor of the onions and it complements the duck meat. Wow, this is, this is an exceptional dish. Mmm. The next dish that I'm trying is called braised beef uh, in Szechuan chili sauce. This is a very well-known and very popular dish. And uh, in fact, I had this on my previous Szechuan food episode. You might want to catch that if you haven't already seen it. But uh, this is basically called different things at different restaurants. Uh, basically what it is though is uh, beef in a Szechuan broth inflected with chili and Szechuan peppercorns. What you look for is tender beef and chili flavor and Szechuan peppercorn flavor. And uh, let me see what's going on with this version. Oh. Mmm. Oh. And this dish can be made with various vegetables, usually used as a base uh, on the bottom of the bowl. And uh, I've seen bean sprouts, you know, Chinese celery, Napa cabbage, uh, things like that. And then this one, this one has Napa cabbage and maybe a little bit of Chinese celery. Mmm. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Mmm. <coughs> There's a good blend of the Szechuan peppercorn flavor and the chili flavor. It's just that the chili is a little bit more pronounced. Is there a numbing sensation on my lips? That classic sensation that you get when eating Szechuan food, it's not hit over your head, but there is a numbing effect. But I would say the chili spiciness is a stronger effect than the numbing one. Mm. The beef itself, has a bit of chew to it, not tough. It is tender, but with a chew, if that makes any sense. This braised beef with uh, Szechuan chili sauce, <laughs> you can also get it with fish. Uh, in that case, it would be fish with Szechuan chili sauce. And over the years, I've had it with beef and fish, this, this type of preparation, this very soupy kind of preparation. But interestingly, you never eat it with chicken. <laughs> I guess it's been culturally established uh, that you don't eat this, uh, this type of preparation with chicken meat. I, I don't know. I, uh, it probably would be good with chicken, but uh, you just don't do it. And uh, when I asked the gentleman to help me at the counter, he was pretty clear that the beef was the better choice rather than the fish. Uh, I was ready to go with either one. In fact, I like fish a lot, as you might know if you've seen some of my, some of my fried fish episodes. But I, I like beef too, and this is really good. 
Well, that wraps up another episode. I'm pretty full from that food from Peter Chang. I enjoyed it a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll catch you next time on my next food adventure. Take care. Bye-bye.